Hello everyone and welcome back to Sibo TV again. I am misled with me is Helium and we are bringing you map number two in a best of three series between Games Academy and Vault for your Sibo season eight main championship. And again, if Games Academy does win this, that is going to do it. They win the main championship. If Vault's able to win this, they can force it into a third map, try and win that map. Then we go into another best of three series, which is just sudden death at that point. Yeah, that's got to be pretty grueling. I, I think if you're in this and you're vault, like, you can't even be thinking about that. Like, got to definitely play it map by map, probably even just round by round. As, uh... I mean, they kind of got it handed to them even on... on Cobble. Of course, that was the pick of Games Academy. Vault picking this map, maybe going to have a, a bit of an edge, but... Do still start on the T side, and T side can be difficult, so let's see what they got. Showtime jumping and spotting uh, some players there in construction. That nade to greet will do quite a bit of damage to three players, and Showtime taking down ramps, but Taco got deleted real quick. Yeah, very fast trade-out came from Vault there, and we actually lose a player from Games Academy, so hopefully he's back into the server relatively quick. Bomb planted at that V bomb site. Good defense set up. Good crossfire. Drawcurry in the water. Won't find one. Connor as his crossfire player does get the trade-out, but Games Academy is able to mop those frags up, so Mitch will be the last one standing. Trying to work his way up. Catwalk tries to get the flank off. Just get one. Now he's one on two. They know exactly where he is. One player will stand in the smoke. He makes a ball. Oh. And oh my goodness. Mitch is an animal. Somehow he was able to get all three of those final frags. Get himself the one on three victory uh, to make Vault win the pistol. And man, that was a good round coming out from Mitch. Yeah, I thought that, that was kind of weird, right? There were three people alive for Games Academy. And that player gets right onto the bomb. And it, it kind of seemed as if both players were watching Monster. Like, one was going to watch Monster, and the other one wasn't quite out of the pit yet. So there was no one covering the person who tapped the bomb. I don't know if that smoke that bloomed was supposed to pop a little earlier, but that seemed like where Games Academy made that mistake, getting one on the bomb and one watching Monster, but the other guy wasn't quite doing anything. He was still, you know, shifting his position. He was supposed to get the headshot and watch short, which probably would have won them the round, but Mitch... With a nice three K there and a and a one versus three. And I was I was even gonna go further, I guess, since we kinda got paused and took some time, is they played pretty passive. Uh, I think it was Taco and Showtime back in graffiti on B. They got that one kill, then they just kinda chilled out to the four V four, because B is certainly that site that's easier to retake, and they came in pretty furiously. Games Academy, you know, deleting everybody to get to that three V one, but making that one critical mistake and then dropping it, that's gotta hurt. Uh, but they will go for the force up anyways. Lucas with just a 5-7. Taco going with nothing. Hen 1 though goes for the scout and pistol armor on Showtime and FNX. So Games Academy now on the back foot here into this, but uh, the scout has come out for Hen 1. They're pretty aggressive down in the tunnels. Seeing if they can make something happen. Lucas trying to see over the smoke. Fires off some damage at Mitch. Brings him down decently low, but the rest of uh, Vault is working their way up through the uh, party area. Trying to see if they can catch anybody. Effie does find one with the MAC-10. Looking to get Showtime. Can't quite collect it, so vault up by a man. Oh, even up now. Showtime will fall, though, so Rarkar getting revenge. Marco still lurking around, but that door is closed. So we will have to make the noise to go through it as he makes it. Oh, dude, Mitch got tagged by a scout through the doors, right? Or am I crazy? I think he just yeah, he did. Yeah, he did. No. Yeah, Hen1 shot it through the door, or dinked him through the door with the scout, and then that USB was able to finish it off, so three on three. Bomb, though, planted uh, on A, and all of the members of Vault were able to get off the very tall portion of position, so this retake is going to be difficult, and no one on GA has got a kit. Yeah, Taco does have an AK that he could save, that he's picked up, uh, thanks to Hen1 doing the scout damage, finalized the frag with the USB, and look at that, three-man save coming out from Games Academy. FNX does have head armor and a deagle. Hen one's got head armor and a scout. Taco has himself an AK. They're all gonna exit their way towards T spawn. Actually in the sewer area. Hen one's looking to find an angle. They're not gonna run into any terrorists unless Rarkar can pick up his uh, speed boots really quick, but he's not gonna be able to make it there no matter what at this point. And uh, oh. that will be a second round for Vault. Uh, Games Academy does save some utility and, or not utility, head armor. And uh, an AK and a scout and that Deagle into this third round, though. Yeah, which 
is pretty legit, right? I mean, this is a, a full eco round, and you preserve three weapons with armor, you're still going to be pretty deadly. Might be able to even to save some weapons out of this, get some more of those AKs. As uh, FNX, Hen1, and even Lucas getting pretty aggressive out to middle, trying to contest the fountain a little bit, but will back off. And Vault staying very, very passive with just Gramps lurking outside of B right now. I kind of I like the setup Games Academy's got going right now. Two players in the bathrooms. FNX is going to be kind of like the Overwatch with the Deagle in his hand. And uh, trying to hunt for those headshots with that one Deagle if he's able to get them off. Uh, but Vault still playing it nice and slow. They know there's guns in the hands of Games Academy. Uh, if not, just at least the uh, Scout and the AK and whatever was saved by the other teammate. I don't really know at this point. They're playing it nice and slow, and it looks like they want to work through the tunnels towards B with Gramps being the player in the sewers. But they will run into the AK of Taco playing back at Toxic, and I think that's a great position to stick that, to stick that AK in to try and pick up a couple frags early into this and not allow Vault to take this B bombsite easily. Boosting for information, it looks like Mitch and Effie and Showtime will jump and spot them. Can't really do too much, though, as a response. Look at this takedown one. He'll be... Then taking out himself, Mitch has no problem dispatching of Showtime. Hen1 and FNX gonna move over and yeah, they will boost the scout up. The scout's gonna be able to do, well, one, you're gonna over the wall. If you needed more height, you can always jump scout, of course. Can't quite jump scout it yourself, though. Hen1 is now finding out. Dude, but it smoked off. What else was he gonna do? Yeah, at this point, they'll be going into a full buy next round, so I, I don't really see them wanting to save here. Maybe set up for exits, try and Maybe steal away. Maybe still save your armor. It's a lot yeah, of money. I, yeah, for head one and uh, FNX, definitely. But I mean, just try and set yourselves up with two of your players together to try and collect an exit, steal an AK away. I mean, I would sacrifice the armor for one AK, and Lucas is able to get one with the pistol. Lucas, one hand. more kill. They will and, uh, not let him pick this AK up though, and the bomb even blows it further back. And there was yeah, actually there the Galil that he brought down anyway, so. Galil suck. Message, message of that round. Galil's suck. Like it. They still had FNX and Hen1 save their uh, their head armor there, so not yeah. bad. Good extra no, it wasn't, bucks. Even, it wasn't even FNX that saved head armor. Who was it that actually had it? Was it? it, it no, it was Hen1 Hen it it Hen sure. and FNX, or maybe it was Showtime and FNX. I don't know. Some of the bottom three players. They saved two helmet cuffs or vest covers, so. Yeah. Nice. One of them just had a deagle though, which I... Yeah, it was FNX, because he still has a deagle. Don't doubt yourself. Yeah, I'm just second guessing, out of nowhere. But we're... I don't know, and I just randomly minimized. Awesome. Nice. Well, Hen1 and Lucas are set up here on the outside of bathrooms. Short, or banana, or outside bath, whatever you want to call it. There's many names here. I actually kind of like banana. That's courtesy of, uh... Of Meta's... And one, I like really see him getting a scout headshot if Connor goes like one more inch out. Pretty yeah, nerve wracking. He backs off though. Uh, got that three man oh, tag tag tag. Tag. lower. Yeah, they gotta be careful here. They do have Lucas behind the smoke though. Uh, very advantageous position as long as this doesn't go off. They don't really check the corner. Flashbang comes down. He's gonna work back into the bathrooms. Two players in his face. It's gonna be Rar Car and Connor. Effie and Mitch both pretty aggressive in the upper park. Gramps will rejoin his two teammates in the uh, in the bathroom lower park area. They're gonna commit here, so it's gonna be up to Lucas to make a big play. And you can do that, yeah. Maybe a little bit more trigger discipline right there. He could have found both those kills, but I can understand. I mean, they already just went down two men, and he, he's like, all right, I got to do something. So he shoots at the first guy. Almost even finds the second still. Uh, but, yeah. They might even still get this. Look at wow, FNX, yeah. Showtime. It's just Effie way back there behind Optimus in that smoke. This is a spot that might not be checked too easily, so I, I think Effie's in a really good position. But the smoke does go down on top of the bomb. He There he goes. He's not shooting. He sprays down that person on the bomb perfectly. Oh, but he can't get back to cover quick enough. And Taco getting two Dos Tacos, por favor. But does he have time? I have no timer on my screen. I didn't see that he had a kit, nah, he so doesn't. no, he's not going to have it. Yeah. So he's not even going to be able to get away and save the M4 that round. So Vault will pick up one more. That's going to be 4-0 to zero in favor of Vault from T-side on map number two. And if they're able to make a series out of this, force this at least to map number three, that would be pretty huge for them. And I realize that uh, Brazilians speak Portuguese, but Taco just made me think Spanish. So I apologize if anyone is offended. 
solid. Actually, not really, because if that offended you, you've got problems. <sighs> Triggered. I'm offended by it. No one cares. Wow. <laughs> Shout out to the My man. Feels. Shout out to the man in MLG chat named Kappa Ross. Yes. Big, big, big shout out. Opportunity, Connor. opportunity seized by that man. Yep, he's got it. But uh, Connor does open it up. Same with Epi. But Frank going against an Eco in Games Academy. A lot of cash into this round. Uh, some upgraded pistols will come out once again. FNX with the Deagle. He's gonna be the last man standing as he's gonna be one versus five. Bomb planet at B. He's just gonna hang out in the uh, in the cubby there at sewers, hoping for the best. Hopefully somebody executes off catwalk, but no one or uh exits off of catwalk excuse me but no one is gonna exit off a of catwalk so he's gonna, he's gonna have some trouble trying to find somebody to pick up he's gonna run around and turn right into the face of mitch the last player left at that b bomb site that'll be vault of five to oh i mean that's certainly the start they wanted right the underdogs uh coming into this finals coming into this best of three Maybe not the map, just because I'm not exactly sure exactly the maps that GA prefers. Obviously, I know that Cobble's up there, and that showed on Cobble. Uh, but Vault doing exactly what they need to do if they want to uh, be able to bring this into a third map. And perhaps a second best of three. But the Scar 20 comes out for Taco. This man's clearly had enough. He's ready to open the vault, if you will. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> Poor taste, my friend. Wow, dude. <laughs> but, again, Games Academy changing it up one more time. We're going to actually have uh, two players up in that upper park, and we're going to have those players boosted at B2 at B1. is going to be in the lower park this time towards the bathrooms. That's going to be Lucas. So we've seen a lot of change up here from Games Academy, uh, moving players around quite effectively. And uh, they're actually up at the boost. And, man, Connor almost oh, can see over that smoke. They did nothing. Almost see over it. He should. Oh, he got off the head of his teammate Effie a little too soon. Lucas is going to have to back up into the bomb site to try and uh, get a better position here. Works all the way back behind Optimus, and he's just going to try and hold. And so Vault have been able to get very, very forward positions. No one is pushing out of B, getting any information for Games Academy. And in fact, Hen One has gone down. And now Connor backing off to throw some set smoke into this A site. Looking at the utility of Games Academy, that incendiary and a couple flashes were the last that they had. Taco, though, is still alive. He's got one kill on the Mitch. Can he find any more? FNX has gone down. Lucas playing on Optimus. He finds the one frag. FNX supporting on that one, and they're lining up. Lucas going to bring down three. FNX and Taco supporting on the ball. So it's been a big team effort here, holding on to the A site. Gramps falls, and that was looking like it was about to go all vault. And then they ran into those scoped weapons, and Lucas with the... Uh, a quality angle. Yeah, so Games Academy finally picking up a, a round that they needed, and Taco holding on to the auto sniper. Vault that time really committed towards that A bomb site, trying to work through the lower bathrooms. And it was really Lucas that backed up. He was uh, initially very aggressive in bathrooms. I think, who was that on the top? I think it was Connor boosted up on Mitch's head, trying to look over the smoke. If he would have just held that angle for a little bit longer, they would have caught. Uh, Lucas backing up the stairs, and here comes the boost coming out. Taco with the auto sniper looking oh for the Oh god, he's still gonna hold this, he's crazy! Head, he's going for it, but uh, this Molotov should land towards the bomb site if it gets thrown correctly. And yes it does, it's gonna burn. Rock R can't make it out of the barbecue. Yo, five tacos. Yeah, five on three. I guess I'm saying Taco, I'm getting so hungry right now. I can't believe that he held McDoubles. that. I mean, if that was matchmaking, you know he would have got pieced instantly. I feel but like he holds that down. against pro players, and he still lives after like three people peek him. That was madness. Here's Mitz trying to fight back. He's the last one up. The retake is successful. They should have the time for this. Yeah, he's just been really close. Within a but second there. Yeah, good job there by Games Academy to hold onto the B bomb site. They make the retake happen. Good shots come out. Trading frags effectively staying together. And that could have been a very, very different round with Taco with the auto sniper. If he would have just held initially instead of drop, crouching down when he did, he would have been able to open up on the first two players that weren't even looking for him. And uh, that would have been a bad take for Vault. That round would have not even yielded a bomb plan if Taco would have just sat on that boosted position just a little bit longer. 
There we are in the round eight now. Vault finally having to take a step back and, and go for some Tech Nine and some Arm. Oh, TK actually coming out for mid on the ramp. Splash goes in. Taco now peeks the door. So FNX and Taco teaming up nicely down here at the connector stairs. Hen one elsewhere. Um, where is Hen one? Oh, he's our number three. Uh, he got a kill out in the top of mid, and Showtime just finishes it off with the touchdown. Yeah, Games Academy doing good things here. They're switching up their play style. I mean, that was aggressive down uh, into tunnels that time. That caught Vault a little off guard. Uh, Vault got helped out by their best teammate, Mitch, of course, with the TK that round. But, I mean, the thing that Games Academy is doing well here is they're switching up how they're playing almost every single round. And, again, here's another switch. It looks like we're going to be sending... What is this? Three players towards the B bomb site. Yeah, three players in that direction. Two very aggressive out towards, or one aggressive out towards the Falcon. Yeah. That's 10-1. FNX is there just to trade out the frag if he needs to. And Vault is very well on the back foot already into this round. I mean, only a, a minute and 20 left. We're early into it. I like that, though. Pretty much covering all of your bases. I guess you leave one trap door open. Like, if they happen to rush up long, G GA wasn't really prepared for that. But they pushed two out middle. So even if there were people there, and they traded, you're far enough out that any of those people on B can rotate back up, so you can get away with playing 3B early. And then, of course, you just have 3B early in case there is a rush, maybe something desperate from Vault as they've, as they've lost a few rounds now. And it looks like, I mean, three in a row, and this is more than likely four in a row. You don't often see 2B4s turn around and go the other way, but Mitch and Gramps trying everything they can, boosting, but opening the door is going to be a dead giveaway. Yeah, Showtime they've made the noise here. now. Yeah, Taco's going to be the fast rotator over. Showtime is already there at Graffiti. Uh, just, they're playing for the retake. Now Taco's rotated over. Lucas and FNX are going to go in that direction, too. Hopefully they leave one man at eight just for safety until they spot the bomb. And now they know it's there for sure because Gramps wow, got Wow, really nice throw. Same with Mitch. And yeah, they're working all the way down into it. Oh! And until the and touchdown the made. And Mitch is in trouble here. One on two. Got to try and plant behind the concrete bags. If he's able to, he will get the player out. He's out with some money out of the round. Picks up one. Traded out very fast by FNX out of heaven. And he's going to go get the defuse. Check for any <laughs> Look utility how that he that wants. that plant is. That FNX runs past it. Checks three other spots before he realizes where it is. I mean, I mean it, it's a good anti-heaven plant. That's, yeah, that's it about it. Really good. But you're so open to graffiti by... and everywhere else. Yeah, I mean, it, it's covered by graffiti a little bit. It, it's anything, it's like, you can't plant there because if someone is still in pit and comes up headshot, like, they're going to kill you. But that was a good effort. I mean, 2v4, they go in, they get the bomb down, and it almost comes down to a winnable situation. If there was some godlike spray control and maybe some more luck, he could have won that. He had him kind of lined up, but just didn't know, had no way of knowing that the other player was right behind running up to, to peek the window as well. But that was a good effort. Again, extremely dynamic play comes out from Games Academy. Head one's already forced down uh, through the bathroom area into the tunnels. Oh, they let him up. Teammate Lucas all the way down through upper. They're just mopping up here at this B bomb site. It's going to be Bolt trying to take their way in. Effie and Rarkar are the only two left. They have the bomb on their back. Nobody's in the B bomb site really to defend. Showtime's going to be the closest man. He's going to be playing deep in the feet, waiting for his teammates to catch up. And there's Lucas, the last man standing. Showtime waiting again from Graffiti will grab it. And that is going to be Games Academy tying this up 5-5. Five to five. All right. Well, that's why you don't get too ahead of yourself in Counter-Strike. That 5-0 lead, how quick it can vanish. They're tied right back up. And I'm curious on your opinion of Overpass. How do you feel it is cited these days? Oh, uh, man. Uh, honestly, in, in, in North America, anyways, I, I still feel it's a little CT cited. A little CT? Yeah, I'm still on the, not on a the ton. fence. Not, I, not a ton. I think it's a little CT cited if both teams are just okay at the map, but if one team really knows it, I think it can be T cited. Yeah. Launders has kind of turned me around to that point of view. Just because of the, the nature, like having to set up these dynamic styles on CT side, having to play out of the sites, that if you lose your battles out of the site, then you also lose the site, and it can get pretty awkward. Yeah, and as, as we're seeing here from Games Academy, uh, dynamic play, moving your CTs around is really effective here. And, and again, I agree with Launders on that point. If you play static, it's so easy for T's to shut you down if you play very static in the sites. Or your your same position round after round after round. You send one dude upper park, 
two dudes are going to be in the bathroom area. One's going to be up around that first cubby. The guy's going to be back towards stairs. They're going to have one up in heaven, one playing from either down in water at B or at, uh, at graffiti. Like, it's so easy to shut that down if they play very static. Uh, but luckily, Games Academy doing very good from CT here to mix it up, and they're good on their pushes. I mean, they usually, when they push, send at least two men together, if not three, and so far they've been working out. But it's been a uh, real team effort, it looks like, for Games Academy to get back into this. Top fragging with nine, there's three people doing that, and that seven kills is the lowest, and you got someone there in the middle at eight. So all neck and neck, and pretty much the same thing goes for Vault. Uh, when they were on their winning streak, everyone was playing pretty much up to par. Having lost so many in a row, it's pretty much buy rounds, lighter buy rounds into half buys into full buy rounds for Vault just because of the uh, nature of that max bonus. But of course, I mean, the currency that really matters here is, is not the in-game dollar dollar bills. It's getting rounds on the board in the first half and Vault has failed to do that for the last six rounds. Yeah, Games Academy coming to back in a big way. And again, this one's a little bit more static from them. One player in the A bomb site. That's actually Lucas. He's working his way out. So it's going to be a three man towards the bathroom area. FNX very, very tight on the exit out of tunnels. Mitch and Connor are both in the tunnels right now. They're spread out pretty, uh, pretty well. Just trying to find picks anywhere that they can. Trying to catch any of these Games Academy pushes. Because they at this point, they know Games Academy is going to try and push. Get aggressive at one site or the other. And, uh, and so far, these pickups are not working out in favor of Vault. Dang. They find one frag as opposed to the three that Games Academy Dang. just collected. And look, Vault look in at that. trouble. Look at that crossfire, though. You had one in stairs, one in bathroom, and there was an op, I think, in party or on the outside of the bathroom. Every single one of them peeked at it like a little a bit of an off timing. There was no chance for Vault to get up there and trade effectively. I mean, they were even fortunate to get one, I think. And here's Hen 1 continuing to hit shots. It's Rarkar. did get the bomb down, but I mean, there's more money, so that probably gets them into another uh, light buy situation. Limited utility, but probably AK armor. Yeah, AK armor should be coming out here, but uh, Hen one with the off in hand gets himself the 4K. They left one player that was Showtime at the B bomb site while the remaining three stayed towards A. That's where Vault was trying to get aggressive, trying to wrap their way back to. They banked on it, didn't work out. Showtime goes down at B. Uh, work it all the way down into a two on three and, and just Games Academy, Hen one. Again, that 4K working out of nest to pick those frags up. They weren't ready for it at all. I mean, I, they were ready, but they just weren't ready for him hitting shots effectively. Effie, just playing on point. And, oh, there was the flash coming in. Then they win first, then the flash. Pulling them down a little bit. Taco somehow able to get one. And Lucas, actually Lucas, who's been like the player of the night. Unable to come up with a frag in that situation. Showtime, though. Uh, Got to capitalize on the damage that Taco had done in an earlier spray down. Finds a nade frag. Mitch on 27. Both these players in the back of the canal. Bomb planted. But it's a three on, uh, now two on two retake, but some information going the way of GA. They know where Mitch is, and kind of probably just figuring out where Connor is. That flash going in, is there another one? No, but there it is. Beautifully done, the trades. Is there time now? Hen one's on the bomb, and it looks like there is. Yeah, he should have that. Got himself a kit, able to get the defuse, and another good retake comes out from Games Academy. Uh, initially held on pretty well. They wrapped their players back through. Uh, two players ended up coming all the way deep through A, and one ended up trying to work his way down through the sewers. Gets caught out pretty quick by Mitch in a good position. But I like what Vault did there with Mitch and Connor. Uh, they knew where Mitch was. Connor just kind of sat back in the corner, tried to play the crossfire, uh, picked up the trade frag, but again, Hen won too fast with the off that round ended up picking up the final frag gets the defuse thanks to having the kit there because time was ticked down pretty low on that bomb yeah i mean they did a pretty good job of uh killing the time off the clock it just a couple seconds more the op on hen one still how terrifying has that thing been and he's he's been going to a different location like every single round deal with that okay maybe they will they'll just take everybody else out first Force Hen to 1v5, and even then you're not safe. Hen 1 has proved that. Oh man, the flank coming out from Hen 1 right now. This if could be only dangerous. the op came silent. Oh no, that would be oh, that would be horrible. That would never be. <laughs> That's the worst idea I've ever heard for Counter Strike. Man, that was uh, talk about timing, right? He was about to take that shot as soon as that player finished playing the bomb and then like got up and hopped around. 
It doesn't matter, he would've got one kill and probably traded out instantly, but kind of funny that Hen1 misses that shot. I think Vault is finding what they need to do here to counteract the the, uh, the dynamic play of Games Academy. If you're going to go somewhere, be aggressive with your entire team in that direction. Uh, more than likely, you're going to have five on twos. You win those exchanges, maybe wrap that back towards the other bomb site. That round, they just stormed their way into A. They made it happen. They picked up the two players that were aggressive and one on the flank coming up out of the tunnels. Could have changed that round in favor of Games Academy, but uh, luckily he missed his shot in favor of Vault, and uh, they were able to pick him up from behind, give themselves that one-man advantage, and just hold there with the bomb planted at A. So finally getting a round after losing eight in a row. Is it Vault coming back to uh, ease some late first-half momentum to, to transfer on over to their CT side? Yeah, it's going to be tough. Either way, they reset their loss bonus now. So no more max loss bonus. They're bought out in well, the round. Well, they don't do that. Yeah, they still got some extra money between the and ramp, so they're not horribly off yet. And they pick up Lucas and Showtime extremely easy. And Taco will be the last man left to be. He's going to be trying to defend towards Catwalk right now, and Rarkar knows exactly where he's at. Oh, Effie might not have, though. Taco shifting positions! Wow. No way! He gets all four of them in a spray down that's so awkward from Vault! One HP. And one HP, he lives to tell the tale. Gramps coming through. This Taco. is going to be tough with the positioning of Hen1. This is going to be really tough. Uh, uh, but Hen1's uh, not looking! Uh, Hen1 is not looking, so Gramps is going to make his way to... Oh, Hen1, he doesn't look! Turns his back, they don't spot each other yet! And one just waiting for the shot, ends up taking the ace away from Taco. 9-6 will be the half. They start a cameraman for pointing that out. No, I mean, that was, you're yeah, looking at there. it, and good work, it Kevin. looked like Hen1 made a full turn. It looked or, like well, they both did. At least did. 90, and just like spotted him for a second, and then in, like, I think he probably did, or at least one of his dead teammates was like, whoa, 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 in the bomb site. And then finally he turns around and it's kind of like, oh, wow, he doesn't notice me yet? Oh, okay. Wow. Taco, the spray down. I mean, he takes his first shot. It gets called. Like, oh, is it barrels? Maybe he went back headshot because they didn't really see each other retreat completely. But he actually went to the other side of that support column, hits the first shot. And then he gets that first shot and all three people are like, let's trade it. And they just whoosh, stars align. And he sprays down three people just like that. That was yeah, pretty rough. Good spray down. Yeah, a, a good spray down in favor of Games Academy. Rough one if you're Vault. So... Possibly our final map of the night if Games Academy can win this. They have a 9-6 advantage. That's three rounds in their favor as they switch to T-side. So it's going to be about how well and dynamic Vault can play here from CT-side to counteract what we're going to have coming from Games Academy. And it looks like we have the stats up on the for halftime there, the box score. N1, top in the uh, efficacy charts, followed by FNX, Lucas, Taco, and Showtime. Over on Vault, it's Connor, who actually managed to go positive, plus one. And uh, Mitch, who went 14 and 12, so plus two, not bad. But Connor, Effie, Mitch, Rar, Car, oh, excuse me, and Gramps uh, in that order of efficacy. But Too many McDoubles tonight, huh? No, man. Too many something. I think you just need to change your name from Helium to Hamburglar. <laughs> I think you just need to commit to it. I don't think I'm like weird and creepy enough to be the Hamburglar. Maybe yeah, Spangler Hamburglar. can change his name. That's Batman, though, bro. Roasted. He's committed. Committed. He's Miley Cyrus, let's be honest. Yeah, Spangler Ball. <laughs> Which was played at the LAN. It was, for anyone good, that knows what that is. Good looking out for you, Spangler. And if you don't know what that is, please Google uh, Spangler Ball Karaoke with, with Moxie. It was amazing. And uh, Games Academy storming their way into the A bomb site here, finding luck so far, getting two. Lucas only goes down to 28. If it has to start to work out of the bank, and he's in trouble. Two T's right in his face. Only raw card left. They need this pistol round. But he's oh, going for the knife. He got a knife out because he dropped his pistol out of ammo, trying to pick up another one. It's caught with the knife. Games got me up 10 to 6 over Vault now. That's tough. Uh, is, that the, is that the same way it went? Let me check. On Cobble going into the second half. When you need it most, you lose the you lose the pistol. I mean, that makes it so much harder. They were one round closer. This was a 9-6 half. Uh, it was Games Academy on Cobble with the 10-5. But even still, that makes it so much more difficult. They'll have a little bit more room to play with here on the side of Vault. And I hope they don't run into that situation where they go for this sort of 
oh, we saved one weapon, let's go in for a half by 5-7 shotgun armor, which kind of destroyed their chances of making any comeback. So we'll see. Looks like they're just gonna go for two double ecos. Try to make that happen. Uh, try not to repeat the mistakes from uh, map number one, I'm assuming, but they get mopped up. Really clean there by Games Academy, not dropping a single player, not having any rebuys, bolstering that economy. Vault now, on the other hand, is on back foot a little bit, and they're still gonna save into this one. Uh, they're buying some pistols into it, so. Maybe some pistol and a little bit of utility. They know they're going to full buy next round, so just committing what they can to try and steal away a round from Games Academy and just reset the momentum that Games Academy is working with. Yeah, so the double eco does come out. Gramps has a flash they can maybe try to work with. Already, though, the two people in construction. Lucas and Hen1 waiting for any flanks or pushes, you know, trying to bait up those over rotates as they're much more likely to come out on rounds like this where Vault's going to try to make big plays so to stay in it since they don't have the weapons. Uh, but it's Taco and Lucas finding these opening frags and it is a B stack and GA running into the B stack here and not even going to be a problem. That's got to give them a little bit of boost of confidence. Or maybe it will be a problem. Effie with a nice shot onto FNX and the mob now changing tracks. Yeah, so Vault doing what they can. Three deagles left on the board. They're going to go on a hard rotate from the B-bomb site. Hen1 just clearing out everything he can with the MP in hand. It's going to be working back towards the bank. Late rotate coming out from Rarkar. But FE's already there. Rarkar still trying to figure out what he wants to do here with the deagle. Hasn't really committed to anything yet. It's going to be troublesome for Vault as Effie finally goes down. Rarkar does find the, actually an MP7, so that's apparently what he was going for. Oh, that made brought mid down to 29 HP here in Banks, trying to land those one Ds, but can't do it. Lucas pulls out the pistol to fight the pistol. Gets the USP frag on the T side, so he's must he must have been alive since uh, pistol round or at least second round. And now the first rifle, the second half will come out, and a decent one here from Vault. They get their rifles, they got some kits, full armor, and and mostly everyone with all the utility they could ever want. And maybe a bit of a break. Taco gonna stay on that MP7. Yeah, by the way, those in chat, I fully recommend Fallout 4. Amazing game. Just throwing that out there. Bethesda, I love you if you're listening, which I know There's, you're not. Seems legit. Yeah, oh, right. Mitch. Mitch, what a good push, though. Comes out from Mitch. Yeah, I mean, I guess that's the first time they've done that. I mean, that's a. Do you see that smoke? Even I am always spamming and prenating that boost if that smoke is down. But they kind of just let it fly. I think Hen1 had a op scope on it, but missed his shot and then was taken down. So they were prepared for it. I think it's, it's just the shot was missed. So luckily, Vault has worked this down into a three on three. This would be a big round for them to pick up. First full buy coming out. They really need this. Uh, the score is 12 to 6. So they can make it a 12 to 7. Start getting things going back in their direction. Economy, on the other hand, for Games Academy is well enough that if they drop this round, they should be able to make. Decent buy out of it with only one of their players fully bought into this and FNX a little weak, but I mean Taco with 7400 they can commit to it But it is gonna be a three on two towards that a bomb site like Effie on the rotate same with his teammate Ron car bomb will go down good smoke coverage Games Academy gonna set up in some good crossfires now. It's gonna be tough for the retake There's Effie he brings down FNX Lucas spotting they know they should know that one came for bacon one from stairs I think they have seen enough to get that information and they're just backing off playing the bomb timer uh, There's a nade no smokes or anything So vaults just gonna have to push and try to get this kill or tap the bomb and, and hope that Effie can do it, but he cannot and Rarkar will fall as well. He was expecting to peek off the other side But even still to kill two people would have been a big ask for him and of the last 14 rounds Luca vault have only won one yeah, that's uh, that's rough. That's very, very rough here. Games Academy with good momentum. They're working this T side effectively. I mean, once they started playing really dynamically, or 15 on CT rounds side, even maybe. Uh, Actually, I, I think it was right that. on 14. I'm going back. I'm going back to 14. I'm not. Chat will figure count. it out. Yeah, it somebody matter. will will say you're bad at math and post it on HLTV. Don't worry. That's sure already been done. But 
Already Games Academy is really mopping things up. Only Mitch will find himself a frag. It's gonna be uh, pretty much a force buy that comes out from Vault here. They got some uh, some utilities, got some pistols. Mitch does get the AK, but Hand One goes back to make sure they can't keep it. Eagle from Gramps can't find anything. Games Academy will go 14 to 6 now. The uh, the tri pants have to come out here. If you're Vault, you have enough money, you're gonna buy into this. You need to defend well here, but Games Academy is just bruising their way into these bomb sites. Throwing some flashbangs over with some good set smokes, just basically speeding in, and Vault has no answer for it. This is honestly, if it ends 16-6 or even 16-7, this is more of a dominating defeat than Cobble was, because Cobble, Vault got no pistol rounds. They worked hard. They got three, four rifle rounds and earned that one eco that they got to get up to their five rounds. Here, though, you got the, you know, you won the pistol, you got the two anti-ecos, and you got two rifle rounds, and then one of those earned you another eco, so... I mean, that's not really a good sign for Vault, to be honest, and they've got still some time to make up for that, but it's it's going to be tough. So round 21 underway, Vault on the back foot here, trying to come back from a pretty large deficit at this point. Oh, Effie, I don't know if he spotted anybody on that jump, but yeah, here comes Game Academy speeding towards the beat bomb site, throwing some sets, flashes and smokes. They're going to leave Connor isolated in the bomb site. He does have a teammate very close to him with that Effie right there on his heels, but oh, look at Lucas in a great position to catch Gramps, trying to rotate out through the squeaky door, knows somebody's there, he's just waiting, and he gets a shot, Gramps will go down. <laughs> Wasn't the cleanest. Oh, Mitch gonna try his best, pull out the USP, he does have an op to work with, players on both sides, and yeah, nice discipline here for a Gamers Academy Showtime. Could have maybe tried to peek if this was a pug, I'm sure he would have, but no, it's a, it's a league match for a difference of $2,500 between first and second place. So he's sitting tight, that forces Mitch to back off, and I mean this round maybe could have, could have been a little bit different. You had a ton of smokes, flashes, and Molotovs flying over onto the site, Rarkar, he, he hears this, he knows what to do. He tries to get a little bit aggressive and find that initial peak, but he loses the one-on-one -on -one duel in Monster. He's the first one to go down. I think he was traded, uh, someone died elsewhere because when the bomb was planted it was 4-on-4, four four, but I think Rarkar gets that first kill. That round could have been a little bit different. Yeah, so possibly the last game of this, or last round of this best of three are coming out. It's coming out right now. It's going to be Vault. On just a full tilt by here, they don't really have a choice. They have to commit to it. We're going to have Gramps pushed up upper park with Overwatch coming out from Mitch with the uh, with the op. So Gramps makes his presence known. He should back up here and wait for the cover from his teammate, but he doesn't. Flash blinds Mitch. Oh, nice he shot, still Mitch. finds one after the partial wears off. But if he repeaks this, head one will pick him up, and he does. We got a four on three now in favor of Games Academy. Yeah, I don't know. Does, does he feel pressure to repeat because they're so far behind in rounds? They just lost one. I mean, they could have backed off to a four on four. That's still going to be a bit of an advantage. It's usually an advantage for the T side, but I, I usually feel the rotation's fast enough on overpass that it's mitigated a little bit. But I don't know. Decides to go for the repeat and repeating the hen one. I mean, you got to have some balls, pretty much. No other way to put it. So, still waiting. Four on three here in favor of Games Academy. They have the advantage with that one man. But there is a good push coming out. I believe that's Connor. Yeah, Connor with great push there. Gets some information. He knows they're towards the B bombs. Like two players working towards him, though. They're going to drop some Molotovs down into water. Rarkar in a tough spot. Showtime will get grabbed, though. They have a two on one. Rarkar is the last hope for Vault, and he can't do it. Games Academy will win 16 to 6 identical scoreline victory from Close. map 1 to map 2 and uh they're going to win it. Sevo 8 main champions will be Games Academy. I was about to be like no, it's 9 but then I realized <laughs> it is still season 8 for Sevo main. It took a, a long time to get through the the playoff brackets here. So NA has finished up. We know that Gamers Academy um but that's kind of bittersweet, right? Like, Gamers Academy win this big tournament. Yes, it was all online, but still, I mean, it's a nice result. It's 4500 bucks, a chance to play in the pro placements. But we yeah. know that they lost two of their, their key players in FNX and Taco, who will be going over to Luminosity. So, I don't know. I wonder how they feel. Yeah, it's interesting. I mean, you win main, that's got to be huge. You know you're going to Luminosity. And one thing we really didn't have a lot of time to talk about was how we felt about that. I guess since... I don't know if you want to, but 
We could delve into that a little I bit. I mean, honestly, like it. I didn't talk about it beforehand because I didn't have much to say. I haven't really seen Gamers Academy play all that much. I'd cast like one map of them before. But from what I've seen, I mean, FNX is pretty nuts. Um, Lucas seems like the next big grab from the team, at least the way he was playing tonight. Maybe that was a slightly uncharacteristic for him. Uh, and then obviously Hen 1 is insanely good, but I mean, so is Fallen. So Hen 1 probably getting overlooked just because the role's not really as needed. I, I think they'll be fine. I mean, I was kind of surprised to hear that news come out in the first place, honestly. Uh, is it just thing... like, is it a straight up swap? Like, hey, we're swapping these two players because of the I tight relations of the team? I don't players. think it's a swap. I, I, I know they're picking up two of the two Games Academy players are moving up. I don't think the uh, Luminosity players, Bolts and Steel, are getting swapped down. Or I don't, I don't I wouldn't even really call it down considering Games Academy yeah, has a chance I mean, to make it in the pro division anyways. Good too. So I don't think it's a swap down, but I don't think they're actually swapping over to Games Academy. I think they were just released from Luminosity. Uh, one thing that I do like about it is it's not just... Picking up two good players from some random team that you don't really play with, or maybe your friends you might 10-man or pug with randomly. These guys play with each other all the time. They know their play style. I think they're going to be able to work them in very effectively, and I, I think the roles that they're going to put them in, I honestly feel like they might be able to perform a little bit better than the people that they're replacing. Yeah, I mean, that, that's fair enough. I mean, Bolts was pretty big in the RGN event. I didn't get to see as much as the Eye by Power. At least he was on some of the maps, but... I mean, yeah, I mean, the names when you think of that team are, are basically Colds and, and Fallen, hands down. A little earlier on in the year, it was Fur that was getting talked about a lot, but I feel he's, he's cooled off a little bit. And maybe there's a pun there, but it wasn't intended. And I'm kind of curious if any, now that some of these Brazilian players are residing in North America, if they'll actually maybe flip over to any just NA teams. Which could be interesting. Or if maybe. any... From what I've heard of talking to some of the Luminosity like management, I can't quite remember his name. Uh, I think his handle was like Debt or something. It's pretty tight with Fallen. Um, there's a lot of sleepers in the Brazilian scene. Like some of these like people that are just. I think he said there's like five people that are not on known teams that are just as good as Cold, and that seems terrifying. Yeah, quite honestly, is, uh... <laughs> he's a yeah. guy. Yeah, because cold is absolutely nuts. So uh, it'll be interesting to find out. But I, I cold can show up big time. I, and I don't uh, to talk about how what we think the players going to do. Like bolts will stay here. I don't know about steel for sure. I tried to talk more with bolts, uh, especially back at uh, ClownCon. I mean ClutchCon, <laughs> excuse me. Uh, <laughs> uh, tried to talk with him more, and and I know for a fact, at least back then, a couple months back, uh, bolts really didn't have a good grasp on English that might have changed yeah, now. Yeah, language barrier might be, be the, a problem for some yeah, of Yeah, it's going to be the biggest thing that's going to hold them back in North America. Because, uh, let's face it, not a lot of our North American counterparts are bilingual like some of our European teams or some of the Brazilian guys might be a lot more bilingual than we are. We are I mean, kind uh, of straight English. pretty Stone Age. It's pretty easy to pick up on, though. I mean, I feel like, like if, I played, spots, yeah. if I played with Swedish people for like two weeks, I'd probably be able to call like everything in Swedish, at least Counter-Strike related. Uh, maybe not ideal still but i mean whatever we'll we'll see what happens i'm just going to kind of look forward to it and see what their first yeah, big matches definitely. are definitely i definitely think they're they're two talented guys leaving luminosity i, I hope they find home soon the they can, uh, ESCA event themselves should be the next that finishes up the circuit of the na lands right the one in december i believe so i think so that's be the final, that's pretty much where one. we will get the answer of uh, what's going on with with the new luminosity slash i mean i don't think ga is there but still it'll be cool and we do have european playoffs still going on here in sevo main uh we are up to the winter bracket finals and lower bracket round four so we've got one two three best of threes left in the lower bracket four for the winter bracket final so four best of threes and a two-time bo3 grand final so there's still quite a bit of action to go in europe so if you're interested in that, you can follow up on the channel, mlg.tv slash playcevo, and you can see our Twitter's up there up top. I'm uh, Helium, usually doing Europe stuff here for Sevo at Heliumbrella on Twitter, and Misled here, of course, at Misled138. Yeah, thanks, guys, and uh, hopefully everybody has, uh, has a good night, and we'll see you again pro placement, correct? Yeah. Yeah, Whenever pro that's placement. Starting. Whenever soon, I'm assuming.
Hopefully. They don't they don't allow us to have more than like two days off. We're we're yeah. <laughs> We're back on the grind very, very fast. But, yeah, thanks again for everybody showing up. Uh, make sure you hit us up on Twitter like Helium said. And uh, it's going to do it. you want to get us out of here, Helium? Yeah. Uh, thanks for watching, guys. Till next time. Peace.